Hello and welcome to today's partner Infopedia web conference. This is Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic, security modeling. Kicking us off today from Microsoft, we have Martin Staruski, who is a senior program manager on the Fast Track team. Now it's my pleasure to turn you over. Martin, you now have the floor. Thank you very much, Debbie. Uh, my name is Martin Sierowski and I am from EMEA uh, Fast Track Fast team, as, as Debbie said, and together with my colleague uh, Pedro Ramalino, which is from same same team, we will do this uh, this workshop for you. So, what are uh, our uh, or what is our agenda for for today? Uh, I will tell you something about uh, security concepts, on ownership, uh, teams. Uh, something about uh, security roles and, and privileges, and Pedro will tell you something about uh, sharing hierarchies and uh, and field level security. The outcomes uh, from uh, from this this meeting should be uh, understanding of uh, security concepts which are available in uh, Dynamics 365, and uh, also understanding how to apply all these uh, these security options for for you and uh, for your your system Microsoft Dynamics 365 uh, offers a wide range uh, of security modeling features it's important uh, to choose the most uh, appropriate approach to, to implementing a particular so solution each feature offers a combination of characteristics that provide a balance between uh, granularity of access control, administrative uh, easy, and impact uh, on scalability. It's important uh, to have an understanding of underlying uh, mechanisms supporting uh, each security uh, modeling feature. Can be useful when uh, selecting the best approach to solving uh, a particular challenge especially uh, when planning to develop a large volume system. Granting a user access to the system can be uh, broke out into two main phases, or two, two main uh, areas. It's authentication and uh, authorization. Authentication uh, determining who the user is and confirming that uh, this user is uh, who, who they say they are. Authorization, determining uh, whether the authenticated user is uh, is entitled to access uh, the system and what uh, within the system uh, they are permitted to see or, or do. Authentication in uh, Dynamics 365 is handled uh, via Azure Active Directory, but we will not cover all detail uh, today. We do have uh, other sessions for it. Today, uh, we will be focusing on the uh, authorization side of this. So after a user uh, has been identified and authenticated uh, to the system, that uh, when uh, authorization takes place. So the authorization uh, will take a look on information uh, recorded about the user in the Dynamics 365 system such as uh, their security roles and team memberships or field le level security, field uh, level security profile. And it's going uh, to determine whether they are allowed uh, to use the system and uh, what they are allowed to see and do uh, in the system. Or in other words, what they are authorized uh, to do. So which uh, security components uh, we have uh, in the system? We have their uh, security or, uh, or system uh, principles and uh, access control uh, components. Security principles uh, are objects to which uh, security access uh, can, can be granted. And uh, secure, uh, access control components uh, are components used to grant uh, security slides. So security or, or system principles consist of uh, two uh, two areas. It's system system users and teams. A system user can uh, either be a physical person or uh, a logic uh, identity. For example, for providing uh, integration with uh, with other other systems. So we are calling it a ser service account that has been defined uh, as a, a member of uh, of business unit. 
each system user uh, has a distinct identity, identity uh, for accessing Dynamics 365. A team is a logical entity in uh, Dynamics 365 that is used uh, to model common uh, grouping uh, for security purposes. As with uh, system users, teams are not defined uh, as members of a business unit, but uh, teams uh, cannot, cannot define an identity uh, with which uh, to access Dynamics 365. Each team uh, can contain zero or multiple users as members to provide uh, for modeling a wide range of optimized scenarios with, uh, with teams. Dynamics 365 introduced two types of teams. It's access teams or owner, owner teams. Access teams uh, basically cannot own uh, any any record. This is main a main difference between access team and uh, owner teams. So access teams cannot own uh, any record, and they don't have uh, signed uh, security roles. Owner teams, uh, on the other hand, can uh, can own records, and uh, they can uh, or they they have signed uh, security roles. We will talk about it uh, more in uh, on, on other sli uh, slide. So, which uh, access control mechanism we have in uh, Dynamics 365? First one is uh, is ownership. Ownership uh, defines access and privileges on uh, on records that uh, the the principals owns. There are defined uh, security role privileges uh, for various uh, entity types. Then we have a uh, BU access or a business unit level access, uh, which which define access uh, and privileges within the, the business unit. We have two uh, scopes which uh, you can use for uh, uh, for this access control mechanism, and it's local or deep. Local is uh, is applied for for uh, users which uh, for users uh, business unit, so for um, current business unit of, uh, of of users, or or deep, which is also called uh, parent child uh, business units, and it's applied for current business unit plus uh, any child uh, business units. Then we have uh, organization access which is uh, defining access to all data of, uh, of specific uh, entity type within, uh, within the organization. Yes. You are defining this, uh, this organization access, uh, access level uh, during uh, creation of, of entity. So if you are creating a, a new entity, you are saying that uh, if you would like uh, to use uh, users or uh, user or, or team ownership or organization. If we will select uh, organization option, this entity uh, will will use this uh, this special type of uh, of privilege. So you will not uh, be able to uh, to define uh, more levels of of security. Security. You you will uh, be able only define. That for uh, for this uh, security role, you would like to apply this this security for uh, whole organization. This is fine for uh, some some data which uh, you would like to share with the uh, whole organization. Or organization is also called uh, instance. So if uh, we are talk or when we are talking about uh, organization, it's uh, basically same as uh, as Dynamics 365 instance. This uh, this organization access is uh, is fine when uh, your your data uh, should be shared uh, for for all users. For example, for example, it can be a product or it can be uh, configuration settings and uh, and so on. Then uh, we have last one, which is uh, which is sharing. Where you are uh, explicitly saying that which uh, which users or teams can uh, uh, or should have access for this uh, specific record, you can define uh, uh, read access. You can define a write access, delete, append, assign, and uh, share. In general, uh, users uh, 
a user can share only uh, permissions which uh, the current user has. Then we have uh, there are some access control uh, components. So first one is uh, is privilege, which is uh, basically saying that uh, which uh, which kind of uh, access uh, you uh, or the user uh, should should have. It can be, uh, for example, right access for accounts, but it can be also uh, product related uh, privilege. It can be, uh, for example, import or export data. So privilege is uh, something what we are grouping uh, into security roles. Security role is is saying uh, is is basically group of uh, of privileges where you are defining that for one specific uh, security role, for example, salesperson or sales manager, you are defining that which privileges or basically which actions this uh, this role should should provide. So for example, if uh, you have sales uh, sales manager uh, security role. You are def you are defining that this uh, this security role should have uh, higher privileges like uh, salesperson, which uh, makes sense. Security roles we are signing uh, to users uh, or owner team. Be careful, we we cannot uh, sign security role uh, to access team, as, as I mentioned. Then uh, we have uh, business units, which are helping us uh, to split some uh, logical uh, areas of, of your company. For example, it can be one uh, one team, or it can be based on uh, based on territory, or or based on on country or your branch. For example, it uh, it can be useful in situations where uh, you want to split uh, different uh, markets uh, and. Uh, and separate, uh, let's say, um, data which they are sharing uh, together. So, for example, uh, you don't want that uh, sales uh, salespersons from different uh, countries should shouldn't see records which uh, which you have in uh, in your country. And special for this this case, you can use uh, separating based on uh, business units. Uh, then we have. Uh, or organization access control, which is uh, basically a particular Dynamics 365 uh, instance, typically uh, for modeling uh, the data for for business organizations. So if uh, you have some independent uh, uh, organizations, you can split it between uh, Dynamics 365 instances. Then uh, we have uh, sharing rule. Which is a mechanism for for defining uh, granular and explicit explicit privileges uh, for particular records. So as as I mentioned, uh, you can share your records with a specific user or with uh, with a team, and you are defining that uh, which privileges you would like to share. It's fine when uh, you would like to share uh, this specific record, for example, some opportunity with someone who cannot see your records or someone from different uh, business units because you can do this one. But you still don't want to share all your data with, uh, with your colleagues from other team or from other business unit. Then we have their uh, field level uh, security, which is a uh, very good feature when uh, you would like to prop, uh, um, protect some some data in some specific uh, fields. For example, uh, you have uh, some some information about the profit or some some prices, and you don't want uh, to share this information with uh, with all users which has access to this record, but you would like to share it, for example. Only with uh, with manager, so you can define with a field uh, level security profile that uh, only only uh, some group of people can see a profit from some uh, opportunity. Then we have there also uh, hierarchies, which uh, allow uh, to person to inherit privileges from uh, users. Uh, they they manage or uh, have a hierarchy uh, relationship. We have there two different types of uh, of hierarchy security, which is uh, manager and uh, and position. In case of uh, hierarchy security for for manager, 
uh, you can access data on uh, directly uh, on direct reports uh, within the same uh, business unit. In case of of, po uh, of position, uh, you can access data uh, within and across uh, business units based on uh, job positions. In uh, in this case, your direct uh, uh, direct hire uh, position have read, write, uh, update, append, uh, and append to uh, access to the lower uh, positions data. So uh, you can you can combine all these uh, different uh, features to create uh, 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 security uh, security model uh, for for you. You use uh, the security model uh, to, to protecting your, your data data integrity and uh, privacy within your organization. The security model also uh, promo promotes uh, efficient data access and and collaboration. Goal of uh, models are uh, to to provide uh, multi-tier licensing uh, model for uh, for users, prevent uh, access to to objects uh, a user does not show or or share. And uh, when we are uh, designing a security model, uh, we should uh, need to consider uh, to find a balance uh, between uh, granularity of access. Between uh, simplicity and uh, and scalability, because uh, every every feature of a security model has a different uh, scale scalability, and it was basically made for different uh, different situations. Ownership. Uh, so uh, we. We have uh, four different uh, types of ownerships. First, and uh, first is uh, user owned. So uh, um, the record itself is owned by a specific uh, user. Then we have uh, team owned, which is uh, almost same as uh, as user owned, but uh, we have uh, our owner of the record is uh, is team. It's fine when uh, you know that. Uh, uh, you would like to share some uh, uh, some some records with uh, with with many 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 people, and you would like to share all these uh, these records with uh, all members of some specific uh, specific team. Then we have uh, organization own, which is uh, as as I promised, defined on uh, entity level, where uh, you are just. Uh, Saying that this uh, this uh, this entity types or records within this entity type types you would like to share with all uh, users within organization. And then we have there also a business unit own, but uh, this is available only for some uh, out of the box uh, entities, and basically you cannot use this uh, this ownership for your uh, custom entities. User ownership, uh, as as I mentioned, uh, you are uh, defining that uh, which uh, which user sh uh, should own current uh, record and has uh, has all privileges for uh, for this record. You basically don't need uh, within the system any uh, any other table for granting access, like it is uh, in case, for example, Teams, where you don't know which uh, which users should uh, have for this uh, this particular record, because the the membership of of Teams are are changing in in time, and uh, you need to uh, to maintain this uh, this information within the system. So uh, with with team uh, team over ownership, uh, we would like um, to provide uh, an, an option to share uh, some records with uh, with some uh, some users, which uh, are working on same uh, same area. For example, it can be that you have a sales team which is working in some uh, some specific uh, territory or with some specific vertical. Or, or geo, 
and uh, you would like to share these uh, these record uh, records with with this uh, this team. It allows uh, for ma multiple, as, as I said, it, is, it allows for multiple users uh, to be granted to to share this uh, this ownership of of this record because you can also do it uh, basically same stuff with uh, with sharing records. But it's not uh, the best for uh, for performance of the system. So because of that, we have their uh, team ownership, which uh, you can you can use. Teams. Uh, we have two uh, two different types of of teams. First one is. Uh, is owner owner team and second one is uh, access team. Uh, these uh, offer different uh, scale scalability and uh, administration uh, implication for different uh, scenarios. For uh, owner team, uh, you can you can assign security roles within within the system, and uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, owner team can own uh, records. Because on the other hand, uh, access team cannot uh, own uh, any record. For maintaining uh, own owner teams, you need to to manually or progr programmatically create and uh, and manage these these teams. In case of access teams, it can be uh, it's it's managed by by the system directly from uh, from the form of the record uh, to which it's uh, it's related. Owner teams are uh, cached on uh, Dynamics 365 server, which provides a little bit better uh, performance than uh, access teams. Because in case of access teams uh, doing accessing uh, records, the server uh, needs to check uh, privileges for the specific uh, user. In case of uh, owner team, we have all this information cached uh, on the server. And also, owner team uh, can be used uh, for uh, for resource uh, scheduling, but in case of access teams, uh, you cannot use it. Team and uh, and scalability. Uh, the performance of uh, of security model is uh, is independent of uh, the amount of end data that uh, teams are uh, on. And it's a uh, significant uh, different from uh, from sh uh, sharing model. It's also uh, independent uh, from uh, from team team volumes and from a uh, number of teams in the in the system. It's basically uh, doesn't directly uh, impact the, the performance. Where uh, the performance is, is impacted is uh, with the team memberships per user, as they uh, each need to be checked uh, on an access. Increasing in uh, in team memberships is uh, is linear in impact of uh, of response time while uh, within the capability of the system. The key uh, constraint uh, occurring. Is the the capacity of the application server uh, CPU when uh, performing uh, integration access uh, checks? Because as uh, as I said, for example, in case of uh, of access teams, it's not cached like it is in case of uh, owner owner team, but uh, it needs to be calculated uh, immediately when a request will come uh, to the server. Then we have uh, initial uh, cache load, uh, cache, cache load on, on the server, which, uh, which as, I, as I said, is uh, for, um, for caching all security uh, settings uh, on the server, which, uh, which is improving uh, performance. But uh, when uh, you will change uh, settings of uh, of security or moving users from different uh, between different uh, business unit, it can it can be a, uh, it can have a little bit better impact on uh, on performance because uh, we will need to uh, to revoke this in this cache and load uh, all information from the system uh, again.
So uh, implications of uh, of ownership. Uh, you need to to check uh, a user and uh, any of their other um, owner owner teams against uh, on by by attribute owner uh, owner ID. Now number of teams in in the system uh, in and uh, of itself it's uh, not factor. Uh, cache, as I, as I said, is uh, utilized uh, heavily for client-side uh, single record, and when uh, large uh, common data access is uh, is defined, business uh, business unit access uh, may be more more appreciated. So some uh, some examples where uh, utilizing business units uh, can can help you. You, you can see that we have some uh, some structures. So we have uh, our markets in uh, in EMEA or in in Asia. Then we have split it to some specific uh, countries. And when uh, we know that uh, we would like uh, to share some data uh, only, for example, for for Poland, we can define uh, the scope based on uh, on business units. And all users which will be in Poland business unit will see all data. Uh, in in this uh, business unit, but on the other hand, uh, we can have some situations when uh, we would like to share some data uh, from uh, from Czech also for uh, for someone who is in uh, in Poland. So for for this and that uh, for this and this purpose, we can use uh, teams where we will put uh, people from Poland and also from uh, from Czech. And uh, set up for them uh, privileges for some uh, some records. Uh, business units uh, was was defined. Uh, business unit access uh, was was designed uh, for uh, um, optimum access uh, to slowly uh, changing changing uh, structures. And uh, larger uh, group access. So, uh, as as I already uh, mentioned, it's it's not for uh, situations when uh, your your structure within your company is uh, is dramatically changing or where uh, a structure of uh, of the team which works with some uh, some records is is changing in time. It's definitely not a good option for these these situations. High, uh, high volume of uh, business units or uh, rapidly changing uh, business units uh, can, can impact uh, performance of, uh, of the system. It's mainly for situations when uh, you plan to have really uh, a lot of, lot of business units or you, you plan to uh, change it very often. The advantage of, of this is that uh, when uh, you have uh, business unit access, uh, your records or records uh, within these these business units are immediately uh, available for all users within uh, within business unit. So now uh, we would like to uh, tell, say you something about uh, security roles, and uh, I, I would like to ask uh, my colleague Pedro which uh, will tell you something about security roles and uh, other stuff. Hello. Thank you, Martin. Hello, everyone. So like Martin mentioned, I will start by discussing about security roles. Um, first of all, in order to get to security roles in Dynamics 365, you, from the navigation bar, go to settings and then go to security. And as you can see, here are all the components that uh, Martin has already discussed and uh, the rest that we will discuss uh, in a moment. And as you can see, security roles is also there and that's where you access them. Security roles are assigned to users or teams and they have inside uh, privileges for every entity in the in Dynamics 365 and for each entity the privileges are 
divided by create, read, write, delete, append, append to, assign, and share. And inside each of these privileges, you, we, ha we have levels that we can give uh, to the user or to the team. Let's pick, for example, the read access. If we have none for the read access of an account, for example, it means that the users with that those security roles do not have access to accounts. If you give it basic access, it means that it's user level, the user ownership that Martin discussed before. So it means that it will only be able to read or to, to see the accounts that the user or the team owns. If we have local access, it's the business unit access. So the user will only be able to, to see accounts from the business unit where it's on. The deep level, it's similar to the local where you see the business units, but, it, but the user will also see every account that's in business units uh, below that are, that are children of the business unit where the user is at. And of course, we have global, which means that if the user has read access to global, it will have access to every account on, on Dynamics 365 instance. So now I will be speaking a little bit about sharing and how sharing works in Dynamics 365. Sharing is the mechanism that we have in Dynamics 365 to override uh, the permissions that the user has. So uh, a common scenario is an organization that has a very rigid uh, and very uh, predefined security model, but Sometimes there is the need for a user to access one record that, it, that he or she usually wouldn't, be, wouldn't have access to. And in those situations, you can use sharing to, in an ex as an exception, allow the user to, to see or to write or to, to have more privileges than it should have to that specific record. Of course, this has restrictions. Uh, which are you can't give access um, you can't give uh, access to a record if the user does not have any read access to the system to, to that specific record. Let's say, for example, if a user does not can't read accounts, then you can't share accounts with him. It leads it the, the user needs at least basic uh, level privilege on accounts for you to be able to share accounts with with him or her. And also, users can share more privileges than they have. So they can only share an account that they have access to, or a contact they have access to. So this is an example. Um, on the right-hand side of this slide, you can see that we have two users um, that shared, that had the record user A and user B, had record X shared with them, so they have access to the record X. There's something you should note, which is called cascading. Uh, that is, uh, that we can see in the example, in the other example, which is, again, record X was shared with user A and user B, so there was an explicit share. However, record X has several re related records, and when record X is shared, those related records will also be shared with user A and user B. So this is a consideration that you must have when using sharing in your system, whether or not it makes sense for your business model, for your security model, to have related records be shared as well. As you can share with users, you can also share with teams. Uh, sharing with teams is much simpler if you use teams a lot. Uh, if you share a record with a team, every user on that team will have access to that record. So in, this is easier than simply sharing the record with each 
and every one of the users in that team. As you can see from the example, uh, record X was shared with a team where user A and user B are. So through the team membership access that they have on the team, they will also have access to the record X. When you use, when, however, there are some considerations that I will speak about more in the next couple of slides, is that if you use sharing heavily in your system, then this can bring uh, some performance concerns due to the data volumes uh, that will be caused by the necessity of storing uh, this sharing information and also the, the the time that the Dynamics 365 system will take to verify whether or not a user has access to a specific record. This is a very high level overview of how the sharing data model works in Dynamics 365. We have one table called system user principle that stores both system user ID and principal ID, where principal ID can be either a system user, an organization, a business unit, and team. What this defines is the user and the mechanism that is, uh, that is providing the access to the user. And then this system user principal is uh, is referenced in the principal object access table. The principal ob object access table is a table that Dynamics 365 will verify to know whether or not a user has access to a specific record. It stores the system user ID, the principal ID, which is the mechanism that is allowing for the user to have access to the record, and then the ID of the record that the user has access to, along with how much access the user has, whether it's read, write, um, delete, etc., as well as what level uh, the access is, if it is basic, none, business unit, etc. So this principal object access um, is a table that if not if you do not take care in your system, can very easily get very large. Okay. So this is a, a quick example of, of what's happening. So at the top, we have the database schema. So we have the system user, the system user principal, and then the principal object access tables. And then on the data, you can see that User 1 and User 2 have, together, they have five system user principles. So with the teams they are associated with, User 1 is associated with Team A, with Team B, and User 2 is associated with Team B and Team C. And then on the, on the right uh, table, you will see what this uh, results in. So User 1 has a, has a, access to account X with read, uh, team A allows it to have contact Y with write permissions, and the principal object access has all this information. So Dynamics 365 knows exactly what are the permissions, the accesses each user has. And in the end, after all this is stored in the database, we have the access check. So what Dynamics 365 is doing to know what he has access to. So user one, in the example, has access to what user one has, team A has, and team B has. So he will, he will have read access to account X, read and write access to contact Y, read update to contact Z, and so on. One other thing that you need to consider, as I mentioned before about the, casca the cascading, is that every time you share a record, for example, if you share an account and that account has contacts and those contacts have emails, tasks, or other activities, 
it means that the user you are sharing the information to will also have access to these related records. You'll have access to the contacts, their tasks, their emails, etc. What this will ha what will happen in the database is that it will create one entry for each of these records. So one entry for each email, one entry for each contact, one entry for each task. So again, cascading is something important to to note when using sharing capabilities. So what are the implications of sharing? Uh, sharing works as an exception mechanism. So working with it, uh, if you have a rigid security model, a predefined security model, um, and only in a very few instances, someone needs to have access to a record that he or she doesn't have, then sharing works very well. However, sharing um, heavily uses the POA table, the principal object, object access table. So if you have a lot of shared records in the system, that table is very large, and every time you need to access a record, Dynamics 365 needs to go to that table to see what access you have, what accesses you have, and then compare with the, with the record that you're trying to access. And if this is very large, it will take some time. This also results in administrative overhead. So sharing, you can share a record, but uh, it's not, uh, it's not possible, there's no single view where you can see what records were shared in the system. So if every user is sharing information between them, um, it, get, it can get difficult for an administrator, a system administrator of Dynamics 365 to track who has access to what. So this is another concern when using sharing in Dynamics 365. And of course, if this is something that you use heavily, then it should be considered using another method of security. Because if you do a lot of exceptions, then it stops being an exception. And maybe it would be better to think about using uh, teams or business units or some other method. Now I will go over the security hierarchies that uh, Dynamics 365 provides. There are two types of hierarchies uh, that uh, Dynamics 365 provides out of the box. So it's a manager hierarchy or positioner, position hierarchy. Manager hierarchy is something that has been around for a very, for a very long time. Um, it is a, a strict uh, hierarchy where, depending on the levels, the manager have more or less access to the records of their employees. So a direct manager will always have read and write permissions to the records that their employees own. However, higher level managers will only have read access down the line. This is something that is working out of the box and there's no need for customization. Uh, if you already have an organization today and you use the, the manager uh, hierarchy, it's already working like this. So as you can see in the in the in the example to the right, so if we consider that blue arrows are read and write and the green arrows are read only, this is what is happening. So salesperson have access to all that information. Manager also have read and write information of their employees, of their salespersons. However, director only has read information to, the, to their employees, okay? So managed hierarchy works in a one-to-one. -one. So you have one person has one manager. 
And this is a different from the position hierarchy. In the position hierarchy, the greatest difference is that in a specific position, you can have one or more uh, or more users. You create the positions in Dynamics 365. We'll have an example of that uh, a little a little later on. But this is to be used when you have an organization where uh, the employees have to report to one or more uh, managers. One other important thing to note is that managers in the same position do not share data. So the system works as manager hierarchy, where you have read and write access to your employees, and higher levels have only read permissions, but the managers themselves in the same position, they do not need to share information. They can, they can, ha they can have their own data, and only their manager will have access to it. At the moment, uh, Dynamics 365 only allows for one hierarchy, so we can have more than one hierarchy inside uh, the system. Uh, and also, one person can have only one position. We can have two people, uh, one person having uh, be a VP for sales or a VP of service, if taking the example on the right. When using hierarchy, it is very important to limit levels. Um, we recommend using, uh, at the most, four levels and 50 reports per user. Um, we do have some tests that we've done. Uh, we, you can go until 100 levels, but it's, it's very uncommon to have that many levels in an organization. Um, and we do not recommend it at all. Uh, if at some point you do need to, to get to this point where there are, when you need many, many levels, then probably it would be best to use a, a business unit structure with, uh, with permissions, using deep permissions, deep level permissions, then continuing to use this, this hierarchy. Here we have an example of how how easily these levels can get out of hand. So if you look at the example, if you look at the image, uh, you have each salesperson, if each salesperson have 100 accounts with 49 activities each, you can get around 5,000 records per salesperson. If each manager has then 10 reports, it means that they will have access to 50,000 records. It means that their director, if they have 10 reports, will have access to 500,000 records, and the CEO will have access to every record in the system, which probably is not what they need to work every day. And of course, this is for four levels. If you start increasing and put more levels in this, this can very easily get out of hand, and two things will happen. So first, the person who is on top, on top of, the, of the hierarchy the system will seem slow every time he tries to look for some information that he needs. And also, he will have much more information that uh, he needs to work every day. So, up until now, we've discussed mainly the record level security. So whether or not a person, uh, a user, a team has access to a record. But now we'll talk about a different level of security. It's called the field level security. Field level security is an additional layer um, that's applied to a field where even if a user has access to a record, let's say an account, there can be fields in that account where the user can't see that information that's stored in there. So this is done as an additional layer uh, of security. 
of the security rules. So this works with security rules. Uh, this is another example that I'll give you uh, in, a demo, in the demo, but uh, this is managed by field security profiles. So we, in a security, the field security profile, we decide what level of access a user has to, to a specific field, and then we assign, assign field security profiles to each user that we want to have that we want to have access to that field. By default, if the user has no field security profile, he will have no access to a field on which field security was enabled. So the permissions of the field security uh, are read, create, and update. So this means that this defines whether or not the user can read the information that's in there in the field. Uh, the create defines whether or not the user can create, can fill that field on the moment of creation of the record. And the update is whether or not the user can update that field after the record has been created. So after this presentation, we are hoping that uh, you now have uh, the knowledge to make a model uh, as complicated as the one we are seeing on this right hand side uh, using security roles, field security profiles, uh, sharing capabilities, business units, everything that I've showed you and Martin as well uh, to provide rich and flexible, uh, that use these rich and flexible capabilities to uh, to apply to your system so you can have the granularity that you need uh, that it's a, that it's a simple model for you and more importantly maybe that it's scalable uh, for your organization so now I will be showing you these uh, these components uh, through a demo in one of our uh, demo environments so give me just one moment while I change and share my desktop. Okay. It's loading on my side here. And there we go. Okay, thank you, Debbie. So let's start by going to security. So navigation, settings, and then security. And this is where everything, uh, every component that we discuss today is. Let's start with users. So Let's select this user, so Yana, and from here you can manage roles, change their business unit, change their manager, change their position. So right away on the views, you have all these uh, buttons that will allow to change uh, security level of the user. And you can also do it in bulk if you have a lot of users, if you're just starting uh, to use the system and you've just imported a lot of users, you can also use this uh, in bulk. Uh, managing roles and changing business units, it's uh, a simple process. So, but picking up this user, Yana, and click on manage roles, we will see every security role that's in the system and also which ones are applied to Yana. So as you can see, Yana has only one security role, which is a salesperson role. If I want, I can remove it and apply sales manager, for example. And just like that, the privileges that Yana has in the system have been changed. We can also change the business unit. 
Yana is currently in PT business unit. Uh, notice that uh, there is a business unit with this name. There's always a root unit, business unit, for every Dynamics 365 instance, which cannot be removed, and has the name, and usually has the name of the organization. And every other business unit that you create must be under this business unit. So if I want to change this business unit for Yana, I go to Change Business Unit, and then select Tucker Public Business Unit. Okay. So one thing to one very important thing to note is when when I do this, all the security rules that were assigned to Yana were removed. So if I go back to Manage Roles, you will notice that now nothing is checked on the security rules. So you will need, I will need to go back and again add Sales Manager security hole to Yana. So let's now go in the user record and we can see the information of the user. We can see the teams the user is assigned to. So it's assigned to the Tech Republic team. I will go over this uh, in a moment. And also you can see that the business unit is uh, is the one that we've changed to, and also that uh, I my user is the manager of this user. So right now the manager hierarchy, if enabled, would be working, and I would have access to every record uh, that the NA has access to with both read and write. Uh, access. Okay. So from here we can have a look at the security access uh, at the um, related records and we can see security rules and field security profiles. So security rules is another view for the security roles. So every security role will be here and you can remove them or manage them. But more importantly, I would like to show you the field security profile. So there is no field security profile associated with Yana currently, so I will add one. System Administrator is a default field security profile, so it's, it is similar to the System Administrator security rule. So System Administrator field security profile will have access to every field uh, enabled for field security level. But I wanted to show you, I created one Opportunity Specialist field security profile. And if you go to field permissions, this will show you a list of every single field enabled for, for field security profile in Dynamics 365. So you will notice that we have three fields here that do not ha that have update and create blank. One has read blank. The last one has update and create blank. You will know these are out of the box fields, so they have uh, they are exceptions. But I did enable field security profile for another field, uh, out of the box field, which is the close probability in the opportunity entity. So if I open this, you will notice that IANA, with the security field security profile, will be able to read what's on this field, on the close probability field, uh, but IANA will not be able to update or create this field. So... Also, in the field security profile, I can check what are the users or teams that have this field security profile associated. So if I want, I can come here, and as I know that uh, Yana is in the Czech Republic team, I can add the team. Okay, and now every user of this team will have read access 
to the close probability field inside every opportunity record. Okay. So I'll keep adding this uh, this field security profile. And now I'll go back, I click on security again, and I'm going into security roles. So Dynamics 365 has a set of out-of-the-box security roles, and it is highly recommended not to change them or delete them. Every time you need a role, um, because starting a role from scratch is very difficult in order to have all the permissions that you need. So the recommendation is always to make a copy of the security role that you believe uh, it's more appropriate for what you're looking for. So as an example, if I click on salesperson, because I want a salesperson role with some added functionalities or with some lesser functionalities, I would go to my, more actions and click copy role. And from here, I can click on salesperson standard, for example, and I would have a new security role called salesperson extended, which is an exact copy of salesperson. Okay, I have the pop-up blocker enabled, but I will open it directly. So, and this is the one, and this one I can change uh, without the fear of uh, breaking the salesperson uh, ro security rule. So, if I do some changes that then will cause for the users to not have accesses that I need them to, and I don't know what I did wrong, I can just, again, take a copy of the salesperson that I left there as a backup and use that one. So, and what we have in, uh, in inside the security rule. So, we have a tab for each, um, for each component, for each, uh, for each group of uh, Dynamics 365 entities. And inside of those, we have each entity and also the privileges that they have and the level that the, that the, the security profile will provide. So this salesperson extended, for example, it has access, it can create accounts it can read every account in the system, but it can only create accounts on their name. If I instead put it like this, it means that the user with the security rule will be able to create an account on behalf of every user in the system. Okay. The salesperson can read every account, can write on every account, even if they do not own it, but they can only delete their own accounts. They can also append or append to, so this means that they can associate any account with any record that they have also append permissions, and they can have uh, append any record with any account, as long as they have append permissions with the other entity as well. They can only assign uh, accounts that they own, so assign to other users, change the ownership of the account. Okay, and notice that once they do this, once a salesperson assigns an account to other a user, they will lose delete permissions and assign permissions as well on that specific account because they change the ownership of it. And also share permissions, so they can share any account in the system with anyone. However, in this specific example, if I'm a user and I do share an account that's not mine with someone, I will not be able to give it delete permissions to that user because that account because I cannot give more permissions than I have. 
Okay. So let's say that for the salesperson extended, I want to give every permission on the organization level. Let's say it's a sales manager, so I want him to be allowed to look at every account. I can either come here and start clicking until everything is there, or I can click on the entity and it changes everything at a time. Similarly, I can do this for a privilege. If I want, uh, if I want uh, a security role that can create anything in the system, I can click here and keep adding. Okay. Notice that some entities only have either none or full access. For example, the announcements. So these are the these are the entities that Martin mentioned before, which have organization access. They do not have ownership. So you can only define, if they do not have ownership, you can only define whether a user has access to these types of records or not. Okay. If you ever uh, forget what each of the, of the bullets mean, we have here the key. You can always have a look. So non selected user, which is the basic that I mentioned before. Uh, local is the business unit. Deep is parent child business units. And then organization, it's access to everything. One other thing that I would like to add is that there are, there are more permissions than record level permissions. So, and those are also managed in the salesperson. These are specific uh, permissions that allow a user to use more or less features in Dynamics 365. For example, the use of bulk deletion feature uh, is, is some publishing reports, um, promoting users to Dynamics 365 administrator role. All these permissions are also stored in the, in the security role uh, entity. And if you start moving the tabs, you'll see more specific Michelin's privileges. For marketing, you have the permission to create a campaign. Uh, for sales, it has to do in invoice pricing, order pricing, etc. Every custom entity that you create will be the that specific uh, custom entity privileges will be stored here in the custom entities tab. When you create a custom entity, every security role, except for the system administrator role, will have this empty because it, the entity was just created and you have not defined what accesses the user should or shouldn't have. So every time you create an entity, one of the one of the the work that must be done is go to security roles that need access to that entity and define here in the security roles. Okay. So I'm going back to set to security now, and let's have a quick look at Teams. So as you can see, we have three teams that have the same name of the business unit they're associated with and one team that's not. Every time you create a business unit, Dynamics 365 will automatically create a team associated with that business unit. If you want every member of the business unit to have a, to have a specific permission or have a specific security role, you can assign a security role to that team, to the team that is associated with the business unit. However, you can create a marketing team, uh, you can create a team, which are called marketing team, and this team 
is more flexible. So on this team, I can have users across business units. So I called it marketing team. I set it on the business unit PT. However, I have added the user Martin, which is in the an, in a different business unit. So team allows to have users in, across uh, business units, and if I want, I can add another user. So let's add let's add Diana, which you cannot can see that it's in even another business unit. And from here, I can manage roles of the team. So I can give, this team already has marketing professional security roles, so it means that every user that's in this team will have marketing professional permissions. Okay. Uh, what's important to note is that if you have two or more security roles associated with you, either by user, by team, or a combination of both, you always get the most permission. So if a security role does not allow you to create accounts, but another one does, you will be able to create accounts. So this every privilege in Dynamics 365 is cumulative from every source that there is. So going back to security, let's have let's now have a quick look at the hierarchy security. So first of all, uh, you need to enable hierarchy modeling, and once you're there, you have the decision whether to use manager hierarchy or custom position hierarchy. If I use manager hierarchy and I click on configure. What you will see is a list of users, and from there I can assign uh, managers to to the users. Okay, so I can click on on Martin and change its manager to myself, to my user. Okay, and in order to see, to have a, a better uh, vision of how the, the hierarchy is working, you can always click on that uh, icon on the left side of the user, and you have a, a hierarchical view of how the manager um, hierarchy is, is set up. So from here we can see that uh, Pedro is the manager of both Yana and Martin. And uh, if Yana was the manager of Martin, Martin would show um, in the bottom of this of this uh, hierarchy. If on the other hand I want to look use the custom position hierarchy, when I click on configure. I will not see users, but I will see uh, positions. So I've created three positions, uh, CEO, sales manager, and marketing manager. Uh, both sales manager and marketing manager are below the CEO. And again, if you click on this icon, you will be able to see a more uh, hierarchical view of, of this hierarchy. If I want to look at Let's have a look at this position, the sales manager, uh, the marketing manager position. Okay. So we have the name of the position, the, the parent position, so who will be the higher up in the hierarchy, 
And then we have this list of the users that are in this position. And it's this list that uh, you will use to add more or less users. So I can come here and assign, for example, the CRM admin user to this position. And now the CRM admin is a marketing manager and will report to the CEO. So the CEO will have access to uh, to, the, to his records with read and write access. You can increase the hierarchy depth. Again, we recommend having uh, at most four. And you can also exclude records from the hierarchy. So if you do not want uh, for some record to be present, in the hierarchy model, so your director does not need to to access, to read and to write on uh, a specific record, then you can add them here. So if the if you don't want them to use your activities, to see your activities, your emails and your communications, and even edit them, if you add them here, they will be excluded from the hierarchy security model. However, if your manager does have access to that, to, the, to your activities through other means, through Teams, uh, for example, uh, through security role, then they will still see your activities. This is just to exclude them from the hierarchy uh, security model. Okay, so from here, I will now go to actually let me go back to security just to talk about um, the access team templates. So out of the box uh, Dynamics 365 has a, an access team template. You can create your own. Uh, for this demo I'll be using the out of the box one. Uh, this is how it looks. It's a very small amount of information. Uh, it has a name. It has the ent entity where it will be run on. So opportunity. Uh, opportunity is currently the only entity in Dynamics 365 in my in my demo environment, which is enabled for uh, for team access. So that's why it's the only one shown in this drop down. And this is the are the access rights that this team template will, will allow. So append, append to read and write. So I will show you how this works in practice. So once the sales team template is created, the way to apply it is to create a subgrid in the opportunity form so you can then dynamically add team members that will have those accesses, so append, append to read and write, to that specific record. So in the customized system or in a solution that where you'll have, uh, I will select opportunity, just so you can see where it is defined that opportunity is enabled for access teams. So if you notice that we have a checkbox here for access teams, so this will allow, uh, that's why it was shown in the dropdown. If you want other entities to have this, uh, to use access teams, then you need to go to, uh, to the customizations and enable them to it just by clicking on this checkbox, saving and then publishing. I will then go to the form. Okay, let's go to the forms. And I, I have already added the subgrid for the team template, but I will show you uh, what, uh, what is the definition that you need to add.
Okay, so I have added this subgrid here, sales team members. And you can see that in this data sort, first of all, I will need to select all record types. Then on the entity itself, I must select users because these are the users that will have access to this entity. And then in this default view, I need to add the associated record team members. If I don't do this, this team template dropdown will not show. So if I select application users, it's no longer showing. So I need to add associated record team members. And then in here, I have every team template that I have for opportunity. I only have one, that's why it's only showing one. But once I have this, I can click on OK, Save, Publish, and the subgrid will be there. And what this will mean is that every user that I add to this subgrid will have append, append to, read, and write permissions for this record only, for the record where I'm on. Let me show you what I mean. So going back to Dynamics 365, to sales and then opportunities, I have created a, a mostly blank opportunity just to show you how the team access will work. So this is the opportunity I created. And I have the sales team members view here. I can come here and add, for example, Yana. So notice that it did some processing because Dynamics 365 has just given Yana the possibility to read, write, append, and append to on this opportunity for, for selling only, only this record. Even if Yana does not have access to any other opportunities that I own, on this one she will have. And every other member that I have add, add in this list will have those same permissions to this uh, to this record only. And if I want to remove those permissions, I just need to remove them from the sales team, uh, from the team access, from the, from the access team. So to finish, I'll just show you how sharing looks like uh, in Dynamics 365. So in any record that you are, if the record is enabled for sharing, you will have a share uh, button. When you click on it, you'll come to this screen, which will show you every team or user and what permissions are shared, uh, this record is shared with. So let's say that I want to share this, uh, this opportunity with uh, Yana. Automatically, I'm giving, I'm providing read access, but if I want, I can provide even more access. I can provide write, delete, append, assign, and even share. So, uh, Yana can share with another user. Okay? And once I do this, Yana will now have read access to this opportunity, but unless Yana has write accesses to this opportunity for from other security, uh, from other component, then Yana will all only be able to to see the opportunity, and will not be able to to update it or delete it or any other uh, operation besides reading uh, the opportunity. If I want to remove or change the access, I can come here and remove the user. One last thing, you can also share secured fields. So let's say I know that Yana only has, uh, you notice that the probability field has a, a small key to the left. It means that it's secured, but because I'm logged in with the system administrator, I can see all the information that's in this field. But let's say that 
Yana only has read permission, but I want Yana to be able to update this field as well for this specific opportunity. In this scenario, I can share the, secure the security field. So I can I can add Yana here to this left uh, to this left hand uh, view, and then on the right I can uh, change I can change I can add security permissions regarding the probability field. Okay. So let's add Yana here. Let's select Yana first, and then, as you can see, Yana already has permissions. I will. She already has read permission, but I will add again read permission. But I will also add the update one. When I click OK, when she comes to this. As you can see, when I up, when I refresh the the view, it's now all the Yana now has yes permission to update the field. When she when uh, she comes to this opportunity, she will be able to change the close probability. Okay, so this is the the end of the demo. I will be going back to the presentation now. Okay, so now we have uh, some time for questions. Um, so feel free to use the chat. Ah, go ahead, Abby. Pedro, I was just going to say, if I could step in here for a minute while we're waiting for those questions to come in. Uh, folks, I'd like to call your attention to the survey link that I posted in the messages window. Your feedback is very valuable to us. We hope that you'll take a moment to fill it out. Click the link, enter your email, you'll be taken into the survey. There's five questions, and our voting scale is on a scale of one to five, with five being the best score possible. And then be sure to click on the Submit button at the bottom to ensure that your feedback has been received. And with that, uh, Pedro, I'll turn it back to you guys for questions. Sure. Uh, we have a question from uh, Nabil. So the question is whether we need to have as many subgrids as access teams. Uh, the question, uh, the yes, you do. So a subgrid will have will be associated with one access team. So you'll have to. So I suggest that if you are in a scenario like this, probably the best way is to find uh, another way, another model that would work uh, for for your customer. All right, great. Uh, anyone else out there with questions for our presenters? Uh, now is the time if you have any. And while we're waiting for those to come in, uh, either Pedro or Martin, do you guys have any final words before we conclude the recording? Nope. Uh, just thank everyone for, for uh, showing up. Um, if you have any more questions, any doubts that uh, came from this presentation, uh, feel free to reach out to your Fast Track program manager. Um, they, already, they also have access to this content. He can go over it with you uh, to clarify any other doubt. Great. Thanks, Pedro. Martin, any final words from you? No, thank you. I would like also uh, thank you all for your attention, and uh, I will be looking for next session together. All right, great. So, ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude the recorded portion of today's Partner Infopedia web conference. You can get to the web conference recording and the uh, materials at the same registration site within 24 hours. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and thank you, audience, for logging in and joining us today.